Let's talk about the Penrose drain. It is such a commonly used drain in veterinary medicine, and it has a lot of good practical usages. The Penrose drain would be considered a passive type of drainage. You place it, and it acts by creating a conduit by which the fluid can just follow out of the wounds. Very, very simple mechanism. Penrose drains tend to come in a narrow and a wider width. I personally prefer the narrow width. I don't find that the wide one gives me anything extra and it's just bigger and bulkier. So I stick with the narrower one. Both work well. It's just a personal preference of mine. I thought I would share that with you. When using a Penrose drain, there's a few points you want to keep in mind. One, don't fenestrate the drain. It is meant to work as a, as a conduit for the fluid to follow. It's actually the fluid comes down the drain because of surface tension. So the fluid's not meant to go inside that drain. It's just going to go around it. By putting holes in it, you're actually decreasing the amount of surface that the drain has. In theory, it could make it less efficient. There's no need for fenestrating a Penrose drain. Use it the way you pull it out of the package. Two, when you're placing a Penrose drain, it is very important that the drain exit from the most dependent area of the wound where you're working. Because it works by gravity, you've got to make sure that all the fluid that is in that wound is going to pile down towards the exit point that your drain is exiting from. Really important. Now, that sounds like a really simple thing to keep in mind, but sometimes when you're working on a wound and the patient is in dorsal recumbency, the dependent most area at that moment can be dorsal. So you've got to do a little bit of brain gymnastics Flip your patient around and make sure you find the most dependent area for when that patient will be up and about. Three, when you're placing a Penrose drain, only have it come out of the skin in one place. Avoid having an entry and exit point for your Penrose drain. I understand why people do that. Why you have it enter someplace and exit in that dependent most area because it's a nice way to anchor it and you can see where it is. It's kind of a tidy way to do it. But your entry point to the Penrose drain doesn't bring anything good to your patient, to the wound itself. And it can act as a wick. It can act as a place where bacteria and dirt can actually enter the wound. Now, the exit point, you've got to think that there's going to be fluid coming out of that point. So things are less likely to crawl up the exit point, but they can easily crawl in through the entrance point. Four, when placing your Penrose drain, you want to make sure that the exit point for your drain is not in or close to your incision. Keep a distance from the incision. If you have it exiting through your incision, your incision's not going to heal very well. So don't have it exit through your incision. Pick some healthy, well-vascularized tissue away from your incision for your exit point. Keep it in mind that it still has to be in the dependent most area of your wound. Five, always cover your Penrose drain. Always place a bandage over your Penrose drain. And there are many reasons to do that. But the most important reason is that the Penrose will bring all the fluid outside of the wound, out into the environment, and it's going to make a mess everywhere. So you want to have something to catch that fluid, and that is the job of your bandage but you also want to be able to monitor how much fluid is coming out of that wound. So today the bandage was soaked. 
tomorrow, it wasn't quite so nearly as much. So now we know we have a progression there. You can see that there's less and less fluid. Bandaging is important. Now there are areas where you might use a Penrose drain and you really cannot bandage. That happens. In those cases, I always recommend that the clients clean the exit point because there's only going to be an exit point of the Penrose drain. So clean around that Penrose drain two, maybe three times a day with a little bit of, you know, warm water and some mild soap uh, just to keep the area clean. Part of the reason for doing this is that the fluid that's going to drain out through the Penrose drain is going to really irritate the skin where it falls. So one, you don't want your patient to have irritated skin. And two, you don't want your patient to be irritated by the irritated skin. But also with the fluid maybe sitting there and maybe there's some hair or debris, there's greater chances that perhaps some bacteria will also accumulate there. So by keeping it clean, you prevent the potential for irritation and the potential for having some kind of complication because of bacteria. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.